How's it going you guys? So in this video I'm going to point out some of the extreme flaws and some of the causal evidence that is presented uh, between LDL and heart disease that a lot of these vegans like to share. In particular, Vegan Gains pushes these studies as if they are the bare truth and quite clearly they're absolutely not. So uh, I even left a comment on his videos asking for a link to a study that shows causal evidence that you know, LDL causes heart disease. And this is what he linked me. Uh, so, and I pointed out the flaws in this, and then he stopped using the study after I pointed out the flaws. So basically, what are we looking at here? Uh, well, we are looking at a, a graph that shows groups of people with different levels of LDL cholesterol. So in the lowest group, we have a sample size of two people that have LDL between 50 and 60 milligrams per deciliter. Then we have the second lowest group, 60 to 70 milligrams per deciliter. And yes, I believe they are measuring it with milligrams. Uh, sample size is nine. Then we have 41 people with 70 to 80 LDL. Um, and then 80 to 90 with 94. Now what you'll notice is as the cholesterol levels increase, the people in the groups increase as well. So you have more people with, you have more people in this group. The sample sizes, the groups of people with the most cholesterol have also have the most people in the sample size. And what you find is, so this red right here indicates no heart disease, no arterial sclerosis at all. So what do we have here? The highest cholesterol group. We have 40% of people with no arterial sclerosis, according to this study. No uh, arterial sclerosis in 40% of the people. But then about 60% of the people do have arterial sclerosis for, some re for one reason or another. But the point is 40% of these people have, this, have 150 to 160 LDL cholesterol and no heart disease in 40% of the people out of the, the highest cholesterol group. And now let's look at the group with the, the largest uh, sample size, 291 people. Again, we have about 50% of the people, 50% of the people with 120 to 130 LDL cholesterol, and they have no heart disease in 50% of the people. And then about 50% of the people do. So half the people have heart disease, and half the people don't have any heart disease at all. And what's 50% of about 300? Well, it's about 150 people. So about, a, about 150 people have zero heart disease, according to this graph that are in the 120 to 130 LDL cholesterol. So 150 people with 120 to 130 LDL cholesterol. Compare that to, let's see, um, this group right here. There's about 35 people with no heart disease in this low cholesterol group. There's only nine people, and out of the nine people, like 10% of them have heart disease. So that's like two people maybe. That's like maybe one person. Um, but it's a, such a low sample size. So anyway, 150 people have a LDL score of 120 to 130 and no heart disease. So this graph tells you that a large amount of people have high cholesterol, according to this study, and no heart disease. That's what this graph tells you, and this is the exact graph that Vegan Gain shows in multiple videos of his. Also, he uses a sample size of two people, nine people, and he says under 70 uh, milligrams per deciliter of cholesterol is, is where you will not get any heart disease. Sample size is nine, sample size is two. The fucking sample size is so low that, you know, especially compared to these higher cholesterol groups, you cannot use this as an example. And even, even if the sample size was higher, the point is like, like half the people in the higher cholesterol groups have no heart disease at all detected in this graph. Uh, beyond that, I've seen a graph somewhere else, but I can't find it anymore. Um, but there was actually uh, a study with the same graph, but it goes on and shows uh, cholesterol uh, LDL cholesterol levels up to like 250 and as the cholesterol, like there's a U-shaped curve, like after here, after the 150 to 160 group, as it gets closer to 250 LDL, 
uh, no, like there was, there was more people in the sample sizes and less heart disease and actually showed the, the no heart disease uh, go up, like more LDL and more groups of more LDL and less heart disease. Uh, but I can't find that graph, so I guess that's irrelevant, right? So there's actually another flaw in this, in this graph. Let me see if I could find it without uh, pausing my video. Oh, here we go. So in our study, hemoglobin A1C, which essentially is the measure for diabetes, was also independently associated with the presence of sub and extent of subclinical arterial sclerosis in the absence of cardiovascular risk factors for participants with uh, above 160 and below 130 um, LDL cholesterol. So what that says is diabetes is a humongous risk factor for heart disease. And we know this, we've been talking about this for a long time, okay? And I actually should have, uh, you know, prepared some of the studies that actually show that heart disease is caused by inflammation and uh, hemoglobin A1C is a risk factor. But it, it mentions in this study that multiple studies have actually showed a direct correlation. Um, so higher hemoglobin A1C concentrations were independently associated with increased uh, coronary artery calcium and carotid, carot, carotid intimate, intermedia thickness. Okay, so basically your cardio, your um, your coronary artery calcium scan will go up uh, in relation to your hemoglobin A1C score. Now, later on in this video, I'm going to give some examples of people who are following a ketogenic diet and have zero calcium, uh, coronary artery calcium. There's also people who have used a ketogenic diet to reverse um, high coronary artery calcium scans. Okay, uh, in this one study that Vegan Gains mentions, hemoglobin A1C is independently associated with the presence and the extent of subclinical arterial sclerosis in the absence of cardiovascular risk factors. So hemoglobin A1C has been found to, to uh, increase the extent of arterial sclerosis. And also hemoglobin A1C, diabetes, blood glucose, um, has been independently associated with increased coronary artery calcium. So that's a huge risk factor right there. Okay, now we have this okay so this is taken from a blog called vegan rv and you can find it by searching vegan rv and heart attack on google uh, and it's basically this person's been a vegan for uh like 10 years and before that a vegetarian for like 15 years and basically they had a heart attack and what they found was their ldl score uh their ldl score was below 70. it was 69. Now let me see if I could find if I could find it if I could find the if I could find their um, where they say it. But their LDL score was 69, but their HDL was something like 20. Okay, and their triglycerides were about 200. Crazy as crazy as is it sound. So they had uh, super low LDL below. 70 and they had HDL below 30. It was like 20 and mind you this person is in their 40s and they had a heart disease and they had low LDL they had um, low HDL and they had high triglycerides. Oh wait lab is it was it this lab lab test? Okay, I'm not I'm not exactly sure. Oh, this is new this is new. Oh, here we go. So their HDL cholesterol at the time of the heart of the heart attack um, was 26 when they had the heart attack, and now they tried a bunch of uh, vegan tactics to raise it, and literally within like five months they only managed to raise it a couple points. Their triglycerides were about 200. Their LDL cholesterol was 69, and somehow they lowered it to 39. So they had LDL cholesterol below 70, and they actually specifically uh, pointed out that their LDL cholesterol around the time of the heart attack was 69, or before they had the heart attack, was 69. Okay, the triglycerides was 200, 
and their HDL was 26. And they were not a junk food vegan. They said that they were relatively healthy and they followed the advice of Dr. Esselstein, but they still had this heart attack, okay? And I pointed out in another video entitled, uh, Going Vegan Will Not Save You From a Heart Attack. I went to depth on that, okay? But essentially, what you need to know is they had LDL below 70, still had a heart attack, and they tried, they lowered it even more, um, and they had low HDL, which is actually the big thing here. So that's a big thing, okay? They are vegan for 10 years, vegetarian for over 15, and they're in their 40s, okay? What that tells me, in, in addition to this study, is that LDL is not what you need to be paying attention to, okay, really. And there's a couple other people that did. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, veganism is going to cause a heart attack. And I'm not saying going keto or something like that is going to prevent it either. What you need to keep in mind is HDL and triglycerides, okay? That's the big thing here. So I'm about to show you a graph that uh, I feel backs this up pretty well. So basically, this is a 20-year follow-up uh, to the Framingham data uh, where they basically took about 4,000 men and women and they followed them uh, from 1987 up to 2011. And let's see if I could find it. Okay. And what they showed was the, uh, if you have low HDL, your risk of having a heart attack is increased by 60% if you have elevated triglycerides and elevated LDL. But that's only if your HDL was low. If you have high HDL, you can have triglycerides and LDL elevated and have a 10% lower risk of heart disease compared to the optimal LDL and triglyceride group with low HDL. So basically, you, just by having a higher HDL with optimal LDL, um, you're at a 10% lower, a lower risk. Now, what this also found was um, if you have elevated triglycerides, elevated, yeah, elevated triglycerides and optimal LDL, you have a 30% lower risk than you, uh, in combination with high L HDL. Then if you have optimal triglycerides and elevated LDL, so if you have high LDL and good triglycerides in combination with high HDL, your risk of having a heart attack is 30% lower, okay? Even if your LDL is elevated. Now optimal triglycerides, LDL, and HDL would be a 40% lower risk, so that's the lowest risk. But that's only 10% compared to these groups here. So you can have high LDL like most of the keto dieters, but as long as your triglycerides are in check and your HDL is high, then you have nothing to worry about <laughs> as far as heart disease, okay? And that graph that Vegan Gain showed also showed that you know people with high LDL still um, have no, you know, don't have heart disease. You know, you can have high LDL and still have heart and, and not have heart disease. And the, the main thing here, and that same study showed hemoglobin A1C is an independent risk factor. Now, the thing is, triglycerides are directly linked to carbohydrate consumption and hemoglobin A1C. Now, I'll make a whole nother video where I show the studies involved in that, but triglycerides and hemoglobin A1C are directly linked. And that must, to me, that explains why in this study, uh, in the 20-year follow-up, that explains why triglycerides um, will increase your risk. High triglycerides will increase your risk of heart disease. Um, but high HDL will improve that. Interestingly enough, if you have a high hemoglobin A1C um, and, or, or high triglycerides, uh, typically you can't have high triglycerides with high HDL. Usually the higher HDL, the lower your triglycerides and vice versa. The point is though, HDL and triglycerides is most likely the main factor involved in heart disease. And most mainstream medical doctors, they, they use this as the primary um, prevention, prevention strategy is they look at your HDL compared to your LDL and triglycerides, okay? But there are a lot of doctors that believe that LDL cholesterol is the only risk factor, okay? Now, if you look at this again, 
uh, elevated triglycerides and optimal LDL with low HDL. This is where that vegan RV person was. 30% higher risk of having a heart attack compared to someone who had elevated triglycerides and elevated LDL, but high HDL. So even if vegan RV had high LDL and high triglycerides, as long as their HDL was up, they would probably, they would be much less likely to have that heart attack. But 30% higher risk with optimal LDL, just because you have low HDL and elevated triglycerides. Now, Vegan Gains has tried to debunk this before. He had mentioned, um, he had mentioned, a, he, po he posted a study where people had genetically high HDL because of a genetic predisposition to high HDL, and they were at a greater risk of heart disease. The problem with that is if you're, you're taking somebody with a genetic predisposition to a malfunctioning of lipid metabolism, HDL and LDL levels, and you're, that does not apply to healthy people that don't have that same genetic predisposition. The problem here is when, when we look at genes and what genes are associated, so the gene associated with higher HDL, they had the gene and they had high HDL, there is likely an, other mechanisms at play there. Why was there, why are, is there HDL elevated uh, in response to that gene? Or why, why is there HDL elevated? It could, there could be a deeper problem. There, there could be many other problems with triglycerides, with metabolism of lipids, with inflammation that could be um, at the root of why their HDL is high, okay? And so I'll have to make another video about, about that and I'll have to debunk those studies as well to explain what I mean. I, another thing is some people will use, and Vegan Gains has also posted a study uh, done with drugs that increase your HDL level. And he said that basically uh, the, these studies that show drugs that increase your HDL artificially increase your risk of heart disease. The problem with that again is you're using drugs to increase somebody's HDL, okay? When you are using studies that are done on genetic variation, a genetic, uh, um, you know, genetic, varia genetic variations, genes, uh, gene malfunctions, things like that, uh, and you're using studies done on drugs, that does not apply to healthy people that, that aren't on these drugs and things like that. The same thing goes for like these studies done on LDL where they, they lower LDL with statin drugs and people have lower risk of heart disease, okay? Because statin drugs have anti-inflammatory effects as well. Now, Vegan Gains has actually referenced studies done with statin drugs. So let's see if we could find that. So first of all, uh, here is the A to, A to Z weight loss study where they basically were trying to, uh, they were comparing Atkins to the zone diet to the Ornish diet, which is a vegetarian diet that's been proven to reverse heart disease and the LEARN diet, okay? And they actually, uh, they followed these people uh, bi-monthly, every two months, and they followed them for 12 months, and uh, they had nutritionists on staff coaching them, making sure that they stay adhere, uh, adhering to the diets, and um, they tracked calories, they, they were very, very on it. They actually had nutritionists try to help each one do these diets properly. And uh, let me see, I, I have the graph actually. So here is a summary of the data in this. It is basically the Atkins group, and you can find this for yourself. There is a, uh, like a spreadsheet with all the data. The Atkins group uh, is at the end of the 12 months. So the Atkins group was able to eat unlimited calories, unlimited calories, all the calories they want. And all of the other groups were actually res uh, calorically restricted. Okay, and the Atkins group could eat whatever they want as long as they stuck to eating unlimited amounts of animal fat and animal protein and kept carbs below 20 grams. I think eventually they started adding more carbs uh, back, okay, up to like 50 grams of net carbs a day, something like that. So the Atkins group, they lost um, about double the weight compared to all three of the opposing groups. Their LDL score increased by um, 0.8 percent or what have you uh, compared to the Ornish. So the Ornish actually decreased their LDL score significantly. Okay, so if you care a lot about LDL, 
you know, and you want to have a heart attack like this uh, RV vegan person, go ahead and follow the Ornish diet. But if you notice that RV person, their triglyceride score was super high, their HDL was super low, based on the Framingham data, it shows that um, HDL and triglycerides are what really matters. And based on that vegan gain study with the, L the sample size of two in the lowest LDL group, basically you can have high LDL and still have no heart disease. Well, the Atkins group, their triglycerides decrease by double of, of, all, of the Ornish and all these others. The HCL level increased by almost double compared to traditional. The Ornish diet, their HCL score didn't change at all. The zone diet increases well because the zone diet is high in monounsaturated fats and um, you're getting about like 40% uh, of your calories from fats on the zone. The Atkins though, they eat the most amount of fat and the least amount of carbohydrates and they produce the best results with triglycerides and HDL. And their blood pressure decreased by double that of the, of the uh, well, of the traditional and the zone diet. The Ornish diet didn't do so well with blood pressure in these things. So the thing is, this is a dietary intervention trial, okay? This is not a um, population or an observational trial where they basically can be, um, you know, healthy user bias can be at play for the results in the meat group, you know, um, for proving that heart disease is not caused by saturated fat and LDL and things, it is important that we have dietary intervention trials, okay? Now, observational trials can be useful as well. I mean, the Framingham study was an observational trial, but it's the, it's what are you trying to prove and that determines the methodology. Okay, and so this is actually the, the cascade, the entire spreadsheet. You can go and find it by searching up A to Z weight loss study and looking at the full text because the abstract doesn't present any of this data. It just presents the weight loss results. Okay, now we have uh, this gigantic study. It's basically observational studies and meta-analysis. Now, um, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna study this even more before I make, and I'm gonna make an entire video on this one in particular. But basically, the the main thing is this is a giant uh, summary of multiple studies, hundreds of studies, mainly, um, mainly meta-analysis. Okay, and when I pointed out all of these flaws I mentioned in this video to Vegan Gains, this is a study he linked me to, telling me that that there's no way that, you know, I can debunk this, blah, blah, blah. Now, first of all, it is a giant study of studies, okay? There are many of studies just like this that say, oh, you know, um, ketogenic diets uh, actually are, are better for you, or there's no link between LDL cholesterol and heart disease, or HDL is the only risk factor. Okay, these studies, they use complex mathematics to come to a conclusion uh, based on a general consensus of hundreds of different studies. The thing is, in order to actually come up with a logical conclusion that's reliable, you must actually look at each individual study itself that's included in this study and see what the findings are. And you must, criti you must an analyze critically um, all of the data in the study and not just the conclusion, okay? Because like, you know, Vegan Gaines was relying on this you know, and he failed to mention that they also found a, a, a um, that hemoglobin A1C was a direct contributor to heart disease. And he failed to mention, no one, everyone sees his graph, but no one mentions that like half the people with high cholesterol don't have any heart disease. And then Vegan Gaines is expecting people to just take this giant study of studies of studies and uh, just, oh, like, oh, look, the conclusion says that LDL you know, based on thousands of studies, LDL is the only risk factor. Okay, so I'll have to make an entire video debunking this, but the main thing that you should understand is they have a giant conflict of interest here. And just so you guys are in, uh, understand, this study is actually government funded. This was not funded by the Atkins or the meat and dairy industry. This was government funded um, and has no conflict of interest at all but you can leave it down in the comments if you believe it does, if you found evidence that it does, but it doesn't. Uh, the, the thing is, 
This study that Bean Games linked, the Giant Study of Studies, was uh, funded by multiple pharmaceutical industries. And this one in particular um, is a statin drug company. Okay, but Merck, I mean, come on. Bunches and bunches of pharmaceutical industries funded this study. Okay, why do you think a statin drug company would want to find that LDL cholesterol uh, is the only risk factor for heart disease? Maybe so they can get people on statin drugs and make a huge profit uh, and, you know, provide for their shareholders or what have you. That's what I think, okay? Now, it's funny to me that when I point out the extreme flaws in this study to Vegan Games, he pulls out this study, found, uh, this giant study of study, giant meta-analysis, bunch of studies. This would take me like four weeks to actually go through and, and read all the data. And it's funded by pharmaceutical industries. It's funny, people like Lane Norton, they use the same tactic. When confronted with dietary intervention trials that show that they're wrong, they use a giant study of studies, a meta-analysis, because it's at the, at, the, at the top of the hierarchy of evidence. It's the golden standard of evidence. Um, but, it, but the thing is, just because a giant meta-analysis concludes uh, certain results, that isn't enough. You've got to actually see what the data they collected is, how they collected that data, and understand the confounding variables. Uh, like I did here, you know, really, if vegans can use this fucking study as an example for why LDL causes heart disease, like, imagine how stupid most of the people are in his audience that are interpreting this, okay, yep, yeah, it's, the, 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 the debate is over, like, this giant study of studies uh, found a conclusion that LDL is the only risk factor, and voila, it's actually funded by Giant pharmaceutical industries that, you know, you should look it up for yourself. That actually created satin drugs, okay? So, uh, he also showed this graph here in a couple of his older uh, studies. Problem is, uh, this study, in the study, um, they only included people who were on statins, and they removed people who were not on statins because the sample size was too low. So basically, there's a study done on statin drugs, and it's done for statin drugs uh, companies. And, you know, even so, it's debunked by his own fucking study that he referenced here. Okay. Um, but again, I'll have, I, I made a video on this study before. So, let's see. So, I mean, I know Dr. Berg is a chiropractor. But he's been on a ketogenic diet for you know over a decade, and his uh, he's got a and he's in his fifties. You guys, he's in his fifties. You would think that compared to this vegan in their forties who had a heart disease, who had a heart attack with super low LDL, you know that Dr. Berg eating all this saturated fat and cholesterol, since LDL is the only principal risk factor, and saturated fat clogs your arteries. Ten years on this diet, you would think would cause heart disease, right? Well, he's in his 50s. He doesn't seem to be suffering at all. That hasn't had a heart attack yet. And his cal cal coronary artery calcium scan is zero. Let's look at um, this Dr. Jeffrey Gerber. Low carb, high fat, basically a ketogenic or a primal diet for 15 years. And they found zero calcium in the coronary artery. Okay. Then, of course, we have good old Sean Baker. You know, everyone hates him. I, I, he's an inspiration, I think. Um, he's in really good shape for his age. He's in his 50s as well. Okay, he's in his 50s, just like Dr. Berg. Zero coronary artery calcium scan. The guy is a world champion rower. Um, he's set multiple world records. I believe he has a deadlift world record. He's in great cardiovascular condition. He has zero coronary artery ar uh, calcium on his scan. He's in his 50s, hasn't had a heart attack yet. Eats all the saturated fat cholesterol he wants. He's been on a high fat diet for like uh, 10 to 20 years. And yet this vegan here had a heart attack in their 40s after being vegan for 10 years and vegetarian for 15. Uh, admittedly, they said that they, are, they ate a healthy vegan diet as well, but they were just 
The thing is, they weren't paying attention to their HDL. They thought because their LDL was so low for so long that they were preventing heart disease. Little did they know that they were wrong. Okay, so that is the conclusion here. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Um, I know everyone is going to appeal to authority. Oh, Dr. Berg's a chiropractor. Oh, anecdotes. Okay, but I mean, really, Vegan Gain's own study showed that you can have high LDL and still have no heart disease. The Framing Framingham data, a vegan had a heart attack with LDL below 70, and, there, and she actually said that that was what led to the heart attack. Um, her, her low HDL and high triglycerides, Dr. Esselstyn was wrong. There are studies that actually back this up. Um, there, is a, there are actually studies that show greater HDL and even lower LDL improvement. There's a study on um, a, like a week-long paleo diet where LDL decreases significantly after like a week of a, a, low, car, a low fat diet or whatever. Um, I'll show that in another study. So, I mean, and then all these studies at Vegan Gains posts, a lot of them are just trying to back up cholesterol drugs. I, I, I honestly feel like we should be promoting health, stay away from dogma, try to find what the real risk factors are for heart disease, and be very skeptical about anything dealing with pharmaceutical companies because they have a lot of money, they have a lot of power, and they are just as bad as the, the, the Tyson chicken and meat and dairy industry and all these people that vegans hate. So leave your questions and comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. I'm really open to any kind of uh, like disagreements or anything. I'm down for that. And I will talk to you guys in the next video.